In this laboratory demonstration, we'll see how to determine the equilibrium constant for an iron 3 complex reaction by making some standard solutions to create a Beer's Law plot and then identifying the concentration of the reagents that are needed to form the reaction at equilibrium. Let's get started. To complete this experiment, we'll need several reagents. First, we need ferric nitrate at two different concentrations. We have a more concentrated one for part B and a more dilute one for part C. We'll need a lot of nitric acid, a 0.1 molar, and then a fairly dilute sodium thiocyanate solution at 0.0022 molar. All right, to set up our experiment, we have some of the more concentrated ferric nitrate in a labeled beaker right here, as well as some nitric acid we got right here. And then finally, we got some sodium uh, thiocyanate in the burette, which is all set up here on the ring stand. It's labeled and ready to go. We also have some clean, dry volumetric flasks, uh, five of them labeled zero through four. So we got zero here, and then we got our other four right here. And that's, these are the ones that we're going to use to make our standard solutions to make our Beer's Law plot. So first thing we got to do is we got to add about 25 mils of our ferric nitrate to each of the five volumetric flasks. So the easiest way to do that is going to be to take some of this ferric nitrate and we got a graduated cylinder here. We're going to measure out about 25, about 25 mils. That's pretty good. Let's also go into the first one which is our zero. And then we'll repeat for the other four. So next we'll dispense sodium thiocyanate in increments of three milliliters to each of the volumetric flasks. The first one labeled zero here will have no sodium thiocyanate so that way it can be used as our blank. So it's zero because we're not adding any sodium. So we're not gonna add any here. So now we got one, we're gonna add three here. All right, we're paying attention to our burette, making sure that we're adding the right amount. As you can see, we're at zero right now. So if I dispense three, I should stop when the burette reads three. All right there, get that last drop. You can see there's a little color change there. Number two, right, we're doing increments of three, so we gotta add six. So to get to six, we're gonna have to add, we're gonna have to make sure that we get down to the nine down here on the burette. Uh, so the third one, so at 9 milliliters, we're going to have to make sure we get all the way down to the 18. We can add 12, 12 milliliters of our sodium thiocyanate. There we go. So 12. You can see they all have a little bit different color. This is a zero. That's our blank. So now. We're gonna fill them all the way up to the marks with nitric acid, and then we'll mix them properly. So to the marks are wherever the line is up here at the top. Each volumetric flask has a different mark of 100 mils. That's just because all volumetric flasks are built or made differently, so they're each unique. So now that we have our standard solutions ready to go, we can pull up Logger Pro um, so that we can use our SpectroViz Plus, which is our spectrophotometer. Uh, we'll get that set up and calibrated. 
this is the document that we'll be using to input all of our data. Um, so we have um, text boxes here in yellow that we'll have to fill in. 25 mils to each one. And then of the sodium thiocyanate, we added them in increments of three, right? The first one didn't get any, and three, and six, and nine, and then 12. So then total volume, they're each 100 mils. So we'll put 100 for each one. You're seeing that it's saying zero was because we haven't um, inputted our information here. So the molarity of our ferric nitrate for this part is, as you recall, 0 0.21 molar. And the sodium thiocyanate concentration was really diluted. That's going to be like a 0 0.0022. And then inputting that uh, gives us an iron complex concentration. And so we got this empty space right here of absorbance that we're going to fill in um, using our spectrophotometer. So now that that's ready to go, come back here, and now we got to calibrate it. We have to adjust our um, uh, parameters here to go absorption versus concentration since we're looking at concentration. And then this gives us an option to select a uh, wavelength at which we'll be reading. And so we're trying to find anything that's close to 410 nanometers. 410.1, that's like the closest we'll get, so that's fine. We'll hit OK. All right, so then now we've got to calibrate it. So we'll go, ahead, go up to experiment, calibrate our spectrophotometer here. Spectrophotometer is all warmed up. It's asking us to put a blank in there. And we've got to finish the calibration. So uh, as you recall, we were going to use our number 0, so the one that doesn't have any sodium thiocyanate in it, um, as our blank. And we'll put that in our cuvette which is this right here. And we'll fill it up about three-fourths of the way. We'll clean it with the Kim wipe and then insert it in there. Just a small amount. And then I have to clean it on its sides. And it can go in there. And then we'll hit finish calibration. Uh, zero is our blank. We'll use that as our first read. So we can hit collect up here. And then we'll hit keep to keep our current value. Um, concentration of this solution, of what it's saying, of the complex that was formed, right? Zero, because we didn't put any sodium thiocyanate in there. There's no complex that formed with that um, iron. So it's zero. So zero. OK. That'll be our first one. And then we get a new fresh cubet so that we can do our number one. And we'll essentially keep um, each of our absorbance values. So all right, so now that we're done with that, we got all five readings. And essentially what we want to do is copy over what the absorbance values were for each one of those. So we go 0. That next one was 0 0.0. 4, 5, 0 0.125, 0 0.138, and 0 0.247. Our R squared is 0 0.95. That looks pretty good. And that is our Beer's Law plot. It's not perfect, but not too bad. We can now determine the equilibrium content of our iron complex formation reaction by making three more solutions. We have three labeled test tubes, one, two, and three. And this time we'll use the less concentrated ferric nitrate and again nitric acid and our sodium thiocyanate. Uh, this time, however, we have to know exactly how much of each reagent we are adding as compared to last time. So we will need to use some uh, additional burettes for dispensing the nitric acid and the ferric nitrate. So as you can see, we got we got three. One, two, three. All right, so to make our solutions, we need to first add about five mils of our ferric nitrate to each test tube. Um, we'll use a burette to help us, you know, tell exactly how much was dispensed to each one. So 
take our first test tube. Next, we'll add sodium thiocyanate in increments of two milliliters, starting with the first test tube, getting one milliliter. Then to the next, we'll add three, and to the last one, we'll add five. So this first run, we said, right, we're going to add one of the sodium thiocyanate. Uh, the last reagent we need to add is the nitric acid. Uh, which will add in reverse increments of two milliliters. So the first one, since they got the least amount of the sodium thiocyanate, will get the most amount of the nitric acid. So it'll get four mils. The third one, well, that one doesn't get any nitric acid. And then we can give them all just a real quick stir. And then it'll be back to the spectrophotometer. So now that we're ready to do our finished part C and the text box for the molarity of the more diluted ferric nitrate concentration, that was 0 0.0023. We gotta add that in first. Um, and then as you recall, whenever we whenever we made these test tubes right here, um, they did have um, different amounts of reagents that were added to them. So uh, the iron for each one we added five. So that's going to be five all across, oh, for three of them, not five of them. We added them in increments of two, starting at one. So then the first one got one, three, five, and then we went backwards. So the one that had the least amount of sodium thiocyanate got the most amount of nitric acid, right? So that was four, two, and zero. And for a total volume of 10 for all of them and with different concentrations. So for this one, all we really need are just the absorbance values, these ones. So all we're going to do is clean cuvette, take our number one, we'll just have to decide, take our number one, we'll pour in a little bit here, back on the rack, get a Kim wipe, clean it off, clean it off, into the spec, and then all we're looking for is just down here our absorbance value for these. And now that we have those values, we can now look at our KEQ values, make some calculations, and finish up the lab.